can you buy companies for literally no money or for as little money as possible? Well, the answer is yes. And in this video, I'm gonna give you strategies and tactics that I've tried, tested and proven in my company to help grow your business. So if you wanna find out how you can buy companies for literally no money or for as little money as possible, the right thing to do is to subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you just massage that like button beneath me. Because when you massage the like button, you can make it see more of my videos because of the YouTube algorithm that's gonna make you a better business owner. So go on, smash the like button. Right, look guys, I wanna level with you. I've bought multiple companies, not just once or twice, I've done it at least 12 times, and right now I'm working on three other deals in a pipeline to buy companies, and I'm trying to do it with as little money as possible. And I have the mindset that I use my cash and my cash flow to improve the company, but to acquire the company for literally nothing. And I've learned over the last 15 years of using these methods, the best ones to look for and how to avoid the deals. In fact, once you understand the methodology, the systems and the processes, it's actually about saying no more than you say yes, but when you find a great deal, then you jump in and really go for it. So hopefully you're gonna work that out as we go through the video. So last week, gang, I interviewed a guy called Jonathan Jay that's bought loads of companies using very similar methodologies to me, but I thought I'd actually go one step further and show you how I've actually done live deals with stories entwined into the video. Let's get into how do we buy companies for as little money as possible. These are my tried and tested proven models behind each piece of paper. Behind each question mark is all the answers. Let's go into number one, administration, liquidation, using an insolvency practitioner. See, you've got these in, uh, companies that go bust, the business owner doesn't want to run it anymore, they've got some form of liquidity problem, or they just don't want to run the company anymore. Administrators and insolvency practitioners usually have great deals. You want to get on to all the insolvency practitioner businesses, write to them and say, look, we're in this sector, in this space. If you have any companies that come up like this, please put on your database to notify us when they come up. Now there's other companies and other websites like Edison's here in the UK and loads of other companies that send out databases to people that want to buy companies. So go and check out your insolvency practitioners. I've bought a few like this but usually they come direct to me and I've even helped people that were thinking about doing this and I've got in time just before they actually go and do it. So I've been with them and we've done something which is my absolute favourite when using insolvency practitioners is a pre-packed administration. So you do the deal, you get everything agreed before you go into administration. Indeed, this is what I done at my Lakeside site in Lakeside Shopping Center. It was a brilliant location, but the concept wasn't quite right. They set up this arcade and people just didn't want to go to an arcade. They wanted to go to an indoor play center and we wanted to put a day nursery there. So we had the lease, we had the kitchen, we had the staff, um, we had all the right deals, but the business wasn't generating enough cash because it wasn't exactly what customers wanted. So I done a deal with that business owner. I said, look, they, they wanted to get out of the business. They were stressed out. They didn't want to run it anymore. They knew that they couldn't have put any more cash in to sort it out. I worked out a way of saying, look, we've got a really good location here. We've got a good team. We've got a great rent, a great overhead. All the aircon was in, all the kitchen was in. It just needed a brand new concept that we understood. So I said, look, you're going to put it into administration. Let's work with that administrator. We can save the jobs. We can save the business and we'll take it out and buy it out of administration. That's called a pre-bank, we did that. It's a great system, I've used that a couple of times. Um, maybe you wanna check that one out. Let's move on. Uh, the landlord is my next way of acquiring companies. Landlords, sometimes they have tenants that go bust or there's a landlord running a business that doesn't wanna run it anymore. So for example, Lee Valley, which is the new zoo we've just bought. The landlord owns this place, they can't make it work, they need an owner-operated leisure sector specialist, that's me and my company, and they've given us a 100-year lease to take over the business. So the landlord's invested in all the assets, he's built a team, um, and I say, uh, he metaphorically here, or she could be he or she, um, and they built this business up and they've said, look, we've got this business, do you just want to take it off of our hands and pay a rent to us? Whenever you get that, make sure you get a big chunky rent-free period in there for at least two years so that you've got time to repair the business and get it going. And you know, I've done this multiple times, it's usually just a lack of marketing and some je ne sais quoi on the quality of the business, really taking it to the next level. Uh, je ne sais quoi, hey? 
content. That's fun, isn't it? Vendor finance is my go-to way of buying companies because usually with these two, there's really major problems in the business. Not that they can't be repaired. If something's gone through an insolvency practitioner business, then it's a business that's really on its last legs and there's loads of effort, energy and enthusiasm to bring it back up. Now, whilst that can be done, um, there's usually a lot of work. The landlord thing, slightly less work than that. But vendor finance, someone's got a good business and they want a million pounds for their business, for example, but the bank just doesn't want to fund you buying companies. They don't really like doing that unless you're putting a big chunky deposit and you've got a history of being in that sector so they know it's a sure thing. You might not be in a position where you are bankable for finance yet, but you could use vendor finance. This is where the owner of the business lends you the money to buy their business. You might be thinking, whoa, would anyone do that? I've literally done this the most out of all the strategies here. So you could say to them, look, I'll give you a million pound for the business and I'll pay it to you over five years out of the profits of the business. Why would they do that? Well, it means they've got all their time back um, and it's very tax efficient in the UK because they get entrepreneurs relief on the proceeds of that sale. So for example, if you was selling a business for a million pounds and you was gonna earn that as income, you'd have to pay about half of that in tax. But if you get entrepreneurs relief, you'd only have to pay about 10% of the tax uh, on that. So really interesting. Come on, let's keep moving on. Zero down, no more stress. So this on vendor finance, you might have to put um, a deposit in um, and pay it off over a period of time, but you can actually get zero down sales where the business owner is getting divorced or they don't want to run the business anymore, they've just had enough of running it. So you could say, well, I'll take on the business so you have no more liabilities. What do I mean by that? Well, look, someone could have a 20 year lease and they're committed to paying that lease for the next 20 years, but they no longer want to run the business. They might have 15 staff and they know to close the business down, they're going to have to get out the lease, make all the staff redundant, they might have to sell off stock or return, you know, there, there could be insurance claims in the business, who knows? So you could actually come in as a white knight to a business owner and say, look, I'll take on the business and all the liabilities, and then you can just go on and do what you want for the rest of your life. I've even done that. I know this sounds mad, but this stuff really can happen for you. Next one, bank balance. Say the business, now I've got a bit of this on my shoe there. Say the business has got half a million pounds worth of cash in the business but that's deposits paid for in the future. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example of this. Say you're at a wedding venue and you've collected half a million pounds worth of deposits for future sales in two, three years in the future. You've got that half a million pounds in the bank, but you, um, you can't take that out because you need it for future trading. So you can buy the business and use some of that cash to pay out the owner, um, the, the vendor that's selling the business so that you can carry on running the business. Now this also happens in day nursery businesses. You could get funding for future sales in the next three, six months. You could pay the owner out that money but then own the business and then take on the liabilities. This is also something I've done. Here's my absolute favorite though, reverse premiums. When someone gives you a chunk of money to take over your business, which sort of comes down with the zero down, get rid of the stress problem. So you could have someone that's got a business and I bought my site in Ipswich uh, for this reason. They paid me 50,000 pounds to take over their business because they realized to close the business down would cost them about 150,000 pounds. So it's cheaper for them to give me 50,000 pounds rather than pay 150,000 pounds to close the business down. We call this a reverse premium where people give you a premium to take on their problem and you wouldn't believe just how often this happens because especially with big businesses they could have satellite departments they don't really want to run anymore and their head office team are spending so much effort enthusiasm and energy on these smaller parts of the business you can scoop all them up and they will pay you to take on those staff because redundancy costs getting out of leases could be oh so much more right let's go now into my top tips that I think you should watch out for when using these strategies guys there's so much more that I could go through on this and we will make future videos on this. But before I go any further, if you are really interested in strategies how to buy businesses for little or no money, why don't you check out my Entrepreneurs University. I've created a platform that goes into all this stuff in detail, much more than I do on YouTube. And it's called James Sinclair's Entrepreneurs University. You can try it for free for 14 days. All you need to do is go to my website, jamesinclair.net, and then you can enroll in the Entrepreneurs University where you can use all these strategies to seriously grow your business. Right, let's 
let's get into my top tips. Number one is you want to buy companies that have instant cash flow. There's loads of zombie companies that might only get paid once or twice or three times a year. Think about being a house builder. You could buy a company. They might not have any houses to buy yet, but they could have loads of ready-made planning permission things. I don't like those sort of companies that are on the future sales. I like stuff where there's instant cash flow coming into the business. Now, it might not be profitable, but on day one, some cash is coming into the business, i.e. there's regular customers buying all the time. One of my big phrases for business success is you want to get a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. Nice residual income. It's the stress buster of business. I made a ton of videos on this. Please go and check them out. So you want to make sure you choose companies that have instant cash flow. That's why I love day nurseries, why I love leisure attractions. There's instant cash coming into the business. Number two, it must fold into your existing empire. So look, all the companies I own, I make teddy bears. Hey, that's brilliant. I also own leisure attractions. Where do I sell those teddy bears? In my leisure attractions. I own day nurseries. Where are my day nurseries? They're on the side of all my leisure attractions. Brilliant. I share the database. There's a synergy. So you want to make sure that anything that you do folds into your existing empire, but crucially folds into your knowledge empire. Does your team understand this business that you're going to buy? Do you understand this business? Make sure it folds into your existing empire. Really, really important. Number three, leverage. Make sure leverage plays a part in everything you do. If this company you're buying, can you leverage anything off of it? Can you leverage cash out of it? Has it got assets and stock that you can leverage cash up to help improve the cash flow of the business? Can you leverage your existing team to save money on the new business? Can you buy from the business and is it going to save your existing business any money? Can you leverage your time? Can you leverage your brand? Make sure that you definitely have leverage playing in any part that you buy a company. Let's have a look at my fourth top tip. You can see instant wins for your business. When I bought Marsh Farm Animal Adventure Park, I was an indoor leisure business. I made all my money in the winter because it was an indoor business. I saw Marsh Farm, I thought, cool, the instant win is they make all their money in the summer. That's going to really improve my overall cash flow. I was looking for that instant win. And I also saw they were really rubbish at marketing. And I was much better at marketing. And literally, we put the marketing tap on and we got more customers. It was an instant win that we could put in place instantly. Don't think, oh, in three, four, five, Five years this could happen. Think about this, most businesses fail within their first two years. Only 5% get past 10 years of age, so you must look for those instant wins to get more cash in the business. Number five, asset sales. Is there any chance that you can sell some of the assets of the business to generate cash and then release? What do I mean by this? So when I took over Marsh Farm, we had tractors, we had farm machinery equipment that was all paid for. I asset financed against that stock to throw cash back into the business. So not only did I not have to put any money down to buy that business, I could re-leverage all those assets to help with my running costs so that I could invest in the businesses on the right stuff. Okay, number six, margin and scale. There's no point in buying businesses that don't have good margin. Otherwise, you're just turning money. And as a good friend of mine says, you're just professionally moving money around. Avoid that danger at all costs and make sure Sure that you choose businesses that are scalable. One of my biggest learns of being a business owner is some businesses are just so goddamn hard to scale. And if you can't scale the business, you're never going to be able to make it attractive to sell to someone else. And even if you have no intention of selling your business, you should always be building a business to sell even if you have no intention of selling it. Because those habits make you a better business owner and therefore by being a better business owner, you're going to have a better business. So make sure you have good money margins, good GPs. Don't choose things that are all about massive turnover with tiny little margins. Always going to be very stressful. And make sure you're choosing businesses that can scale. If you look at all of my businesses, I've got multiple locations. They can easily generate millions of pounds worth of sales. And for me, a definition of a great business that can scale is this. If you have access to all the money in the world and all the best people in the world, could you get your business to generate a million pounds easily? A billion pounds 
easily. That's the big optimum word here is easily. Not with difficulty, but with ease. So if I gave you all the best people in the world and all the most amount of money in the world, could you scale a bank up really easily? The answer is yes. Think about those businesses that are just so goddamn difficult to scale. Avoid those at all costs. They're the sort of businesses that need to be owner managed. We don't want owner managed businesses. We want businesses that can be run commercially and profitably without you in it. That's the aim of the game here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Go and check out my Jonathan J interview where I interviewed him on how he's bought businesses over the last year and a half. He's actually bought 28. Um, it's a really good interview, so go and check that out. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And whilst you're here, if you've got to the end, make sure you hit that like button just one more time. Subscribe to the channel by clicking here. And watch this video here, because YouTube tell me you're going to love it. See you in the next video. Ta-ra!